Okay, so like S plus means they are just like broken, never bad. You should probably be banning them. And if it's open, you should first pick it. S is like just. They're incredibly strong, top of their role. They're less likely to be banned, and you should prioritize picking them. Uh, the way I look at like the pluses is usually characters who are slightly below these characters, but they have good matchups into the people above. Uh, A is just your standard, like never, never bad, but nothing crazy. Uh, B plus again is just counter picks and like very niche scenarios. B, I kind of leave for like very off meta characters who. Uh, they're fun to play, but they're just very rarely going to be playable. And honestly, I don't even need a C tier, right? Like, I feel like it should just be bad below that. Uh, It's just for solo lane. Hex, are you crazy? Like, okay, you guys are trolling. Every god isn't bad because these are the gods on the list, and I'm going to move them up. Like, what do you think? I haven't started the list yet. Okay, uh, it's okay. List. Okay, now this will be easier for you guys to realize that. There you go. <laughs> Alright, let's start. Shiva. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna put Shiva in... B plus. Uh, I think he's a solid laner. I think he has good item interactions. Uh, but obviously the character has a lot of downsides. He's he's very one dimensional. He just has his one and his two. His ultimate's pretty useless. Uh, he just doesn't offer as much as any of the characters I'm gonna put above. Uh, Emma, I actually think she's really good and ranked from what I've played. Uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna start her in A plus. Until I see what's around her. I think she has pretty solid matchups when you get good at the character into like Bake and uh, Bologna and Osiris as well. I think she farms well. She has a lot of damage. She builds Executioner. Uh, and I think being able to teleport uh, from lane constantly makes her really valuable as well. Cause she's, a, she's a really strong mid-game uh, teamfighter as well. Uh... See, this, this is when the list might change, because, like, I think Wukong has been really bad uh, from the games I've played. Like, I wouldn't put him in A, but then I feel like I wouldn't put him with Shiva, so I'd probably have to move Shiva down. Um, yeah, let's do that. Wukong, yeah, he's very safe. His lane, his matchups are, like, kind of stable, but, uh, I don't know, I just think his damage is really underwhelming, and he just doesn't offer as much threat as the other soul as I don't think he does well into Bake. I don't think he does very well into Osiris and Bologna. He's just super low pressure. Um, in my opinion. I could put him A just because he's so safe, I guess. And like you guys are saying, he's really easy to play, but... I, I kind of think I'm going to leave him in a B+. Because the way I see it is... I don't think you want to play Wukong if you don't know your matchup. Like, I don't think you'd want to blind pick him. Because you could get bullied on lane super hard. Uh, but maybe after some more testing, I'd move him up. For now, I'm going to leave him in B. B+. Plus. Uh, Artio. I'm going to put in bad. Just based on the one game I played, I'm putting her in bad. Um, damage low. I actually think, like, as troll as it is, just not having an ultimate as a tank... Uh, is a big downside when you look at the other characters uh, in the list. She just doesn't do as much as every other character you can play. Uh, the one thing she used to have always is just crazy laning phase. She doesn't have that anymore, to be fair. Like, she just doesn't offer as much as she used to in previous years, and Warriors don't really care about her anymore. Serta. I'd put Serta in A. I think he's just a very stable character, really good laning phase, scales really well, uh, has a lot of nice item interactions, and yeah, he can he can stalemate a lot of the matchups he's in. 
So I would put him uh, A. I don't think there's much more to say. Uh, Sylvanas. B+. Plus. Uh, if you see your lane matchup and it's something that you know you can get away with and you can go full damage, in ranked, it's it's uh, it's powerful. You have to remember, this is for climbing. This is a tier list for climbing your ranked games. Uh, and a full damage Sylvanas has the potential. You'd rather be self solo than Shiva? Yes. Uh, yeah, I just think he's a really fun option. Um... But it's still definitely a pick at your own risk, just because uh, if you don't know your lane matchup and you get counterpicked by something a lot stronger than you, you're not going to have fun. Uh, Gilgamesh. I've really been liking Gilgamesh. I don't think I'm going to put him in A+, but I'll have him in A. Uh, I think having Gooseberries from, from the start of the game just makes his laning phase a lot stronger. Uh, I think he's always had really good team fights uh, and good item interactions with Redstone or Animosity. He's really good with a Pridwin. Um, maybe after some more testing, I'd move him up. But for now, I, I just think he's a really stable pick. He can't really contest uh, some of the gods that will be up here that hard, but uh, for the most part, he'll be fine in most games. Thor. Uh... I kind of have him just slightly above B+, plus, I'd say. Thor, as always, just very simple laning phase. In a low-pressure matchup, you're just under tower clearing with hammer. In a hype, in a matchup where you're winning, you're just uh, poking with wall and hammer whenever you can. Uh, he's still just a good tank when he gets out of lane. Especially late game, he has a lot of potential. Uh, good item interactions, again, with like the new stuff that got buffed and changed. Just a good pick. Arthur. Uh, I'm having him in A+. Uh, Arthur has actually been one of my most successful non-auto-attack solo laners in ranked. Um, and I think the reason is, he, he actually has really good matchups into Bologna and Osiris, in my opinion. Uh, his damage has gone up a lot uh, because of an item like Void Shield, which is going increase, to increase his own damage and the damage of like Bluestone. I think having multiple glyphs gives him uh, uh, like a lot of good build potential as well. Yeah, he's, he's just really solid. Uh, I haven't had many issues playing him. Uh, yeah, you, usually there's a lot of downsides to this character, but every game I've played him, he's all really good. Maybe it's a player skill diff, but uh, I definitely view him very highly, and I'll probably keep playing him a lot. Um, okay, Tsukiyomi, if it's me playing this character, I'd put him in A+, but I'd say for most people, I'm going to have him in A. Uh, I think he's a very strong ranked character. Um, his laning phase is simple, he has uh, range that he can ab abuse on other characters, he has really good clear. And his damage is just insanely high, even with a slightly hybrid build. Uh, any bad matchup he has, he kind of negates with his range. Uh, which is probably the biggest factor. He can kite really well in lane against melee gods. Uh, and he, he has a lot of potential to turn 1v2s as well, if uh, if people are camping you. He also has the, the option to go full damage in his build. And uh, if you can get away with that, he's an absolute monster. It's a nuke. If you got to late game uh, as a full damage Suki. So definitely give him a go if it's something you've played. Uh, tier I'm going to have an A plus for pretty similar reasons as uh, as Arthur. I think his builds are really good this patch. Um, I think his laning phase is really good. Into the gods that I'm going to put above. The gods below. Uh... And yeah, I just think he has a lot of options. His damage is really high now that he has Void Shield added as well. He, his damage is already pretty high with proc items, but uh, yeah. I, I just think he's a really solid god, and you have a lot of potential to to turn the game uh, more than other characters, just with his, with his ultimate and blink and all that stuff. Yeah, just a really good pick. Ula Solo. Uh...
I think I'm gonna put him B plus. Uh, I th I think there's like potential to Ula Solo like in every meta, especially if you're just really good at the character. But I think tanks are so OP right now uh, that in a way you're sabotaging your team a little bit. That's why I have him pretty low. But in general, I think Ula's in a good spot with um, Transcendence getting pen now, and like your your damage is going to be higher now because you can fit in. Uh, more cooldown items they usually wouldn't have been able to, so, in your build. I don't know, I just think he's good. But you definitely have to be careful with who you're picking him into, that's why I have him a little lower. Vamana, I'm putting him at S+. Uh, he's back. He's unkillable. He's 1v9ing every game. Uh, anytime this character gets buffs or nerfs to his ultimate, it shifts him up or down, and... Uh, yeah, they kind of just reverted his ult back to how he used to be. Uh, his build path is really strong, and he's pretty much unpunishable in lane. There's not really much you can do to him. He full clears very early on. He gets free power from the uh, from his passive with the build he goes. Uh, he just doesn't lose lane to anyone, and he just does a ridiculous amount of work in team fights. Uh, I haven't played sub personally, but. I'm probably going to put him in A. I'd say he's probably the best Guardian for ranked other than the Whale. Uh, his matchups into some of these Warriors are pretty solid if you're consistent with skill shots. His passive always has really high value uh, with the anti-heal. Uh, and now his uh, his damage is just going to be high in general uh, because of uh, Voidstone coming back pretty much uh, on top of Binding with the pressure on us too. So yeah, I think I think he has a lot of potential as a character. Uh, the only thing you have to watch out for in ranked is uh, guardians in general are a little slower with their with their tempo uh, in the game. They can't exactly run around and uh, like split push or force rotations as easily. But I think sub is one of these characters that kind of always has a place uh, in solo lane. Best that uh, I'm gonna put a B plus. I think her solo lane build is pretty good right now, but uh, I think the character is a little underwhelming unless you know exactly what you're playing against and the things you're playing against are good for you. Uh, I think she's pretty good when she's playing against other assassins uh, or just really low pressure warriors, but for the most part, I would uh, not recommend her too highly. Chuck, I'm gonna have an S tier. Uh, this character just ticks every box uh, for a warrior. He has a really good laning phase. He scales insanely well into the late game. Probably one of the best late game tanks you could ever ask for. His damage is ridiculous uh, in combination with Mystical, Pridwin, uh, Redstone, like all, all of these uh, proc items he can buy. He just, he just causes a lot of problems and is kind of a backliner's nightmare because... You have to use relics on his ultimate, otherwise he's just, he's actually just going to be able to solo you. Uh, and he doesn't have much room to be punished in the early game, uh, since they buffed his two in in recent patches. He just yeah he just abuses protection based items better than anyone in the game. So yeah, just a very strong character has been for a while honestly. Camazots, uh, I've been having a lot of success with Kama solo. Uh, his laning phase is definitely slow, but he's pretty unpunishable when it comes to his his early game, as long as you play a disciplined. And Camazots in general as a character has been very strong for a while, so having Blackthorn uh, to bridge his early game into Transcendence has kind of just made me think that uh, I can play this god every game, and when I rotate to teamfights, uh, it's just a nightmare to deal with. Carries don't really have an easy way to relic him. Uh, his damage is just insanely high, and he's just super safe. I kind of view him as a infinitely better Wukong, honestly. No shot sure, cameras A, that plus the character's ass. I've won seven games in a row with him, personally. Full damage? Yeah, I've been building him pretty much full damage, other than just having a mantle somewhere in my build. Bologna, uh, I'm going to put a S+. Uh, I think she's still up there. 
I think this character just the meta build is perfect for her. She doesn't lose lane to anyone. She has insane potential to kill backline. She can do objectives quickly. Gets flippisher. Good into the whale. She doesn't really have downsides when I when I look at this character right now. Balloon loses lane to tear. I wouldn't call it a loss. Uh the thing is, it's like losing losing lane uh, is not something that Bologna does, because there's just always ways around your bad matchups to go even. Or be like 100 gold down, 200 gold down. I, I, don't, I don't really think she's ever in a spot in any laning phase that, where she doesn't feel good. So, yeah, I, I kind of think she's just a must-ban, or you should be looking to play her. Cthulhu. Uh... As much potential as I think Cthulhu has, uh, I think most of it is in competitive. I, I don't think he's just a character. He just isn't really designed to be good and ranked. He relies too much on teamwork, communication, grouping. Uh, none of these things really happen consistently in ranked. Uh, even though I think he has good matchups into like Bologna, um, I just wouldn't recommend playing in ranked. I think you're not going to have any fun. Trying to coordinate with your your teammates during during the climb uh, to get value from this character, but if you play in any amateur leagues or something, there's probably potential for for Cthulhu. Clean, I'm gonna have an A. Similar reasons as Sukiyomi, honestly. Uh, she she's just a really strong assassin at stalling her laning phase into most warriors, and as soon as she gets out of lane and is you know building. Primarily damage. Uh, she, she just does a lot of damage to backliners. She's very safe to play. And her upsides are way way higher than downsides when it comes to just outputting like ridiculous damage. Uh, the one thing you have to be careful of is uh, it's very easy to mess up in lane. You just have to use your passive really well, like going in and out of walls to heal or avoid damage from pressure warriors, but uh, once you get used to it, I think she's a really strong pick for climbing. Uh, Kakolon, I think A+. A lot of pressure, a lot of damage with the new items. Uh, buffs with like Mystical and Void Shield. Uh, has good matchups into these characters as well. I think the only thing holding him back really is that he's so one-dimensional. Um, he is very all-in. He doesn't really have multiple playstyles other than just killing backline. Uh, so yeah, that's the only thing holding him back. I think he's just a really solid pick uh, if you enjoy playing Dive Warriors. Change title. Oh, to uh, Soul Lane tier list. Sure. Alang. B+. Plus. Uh, I think this god is still a lot stronger in other lanes. I think there's no point putting Erlang in solo, but if you do, you definitely want to make sure you're into good matchups. Some of those up here, I'd say, are... Uh, I think he's good into Emma. I think he's decent into Vamana, but nothing crazy. Um, yeah, the god just... The god is just a lot more useful when he's primarily building damage. Uh, and if you go that path in solo lane, then it's pretty easy to punish him with jungle ganks and stuff, so I'd avoid him. We have another god in the bad category, Guan Yu. Um, yeah, I just think this god is terrible, personally, uh, from, from trying him in ranked and just, like, thinking about him. I think his damage is pretty low, everything he does is overtime. His laning phase is weak because he has slow clear, he has bad trading. Uh, and Horrific is so strong as a relic as well that the little healing he has doesn't really like uh, amount to much in a team fight. Uh, yeah, I just don't really see any value to this character with how many picks that get into him. I, I just think you're really sad if you have a Guan Yu on your team. Uh, he's also uh, another one of those characters where a lot of his value comes around playing with your teammates and playing with his cooldown reductions, and that doesn't really happen. How Shiva have more value than Guando? Because he actually has damage and winning lanes. Uh, 
and more threat on back lane. Hades. Uh, Hades is an interesting one. I think he's around... Uh, I'd say he's he's in A. Actually, no. I'd put him B+. Plus. Uh, I, th I think Hades' issue is build path more than anything, uh, actually. I actually don't think the book change is very good for him, because Hades doesn't deal that much damage to gods in lane, it's mainly to creeps, uh, and he, he keeps you shoved under tower. So he's gonna have slower power spikes, uh, warriors have pestilence now to fight back. Uh, the change is to lifesteal as well, yeah. He's definitely lost a lot of value when it comes to dominating lane. Um, but if you get him in a spot where he gets the late game, uh, you can still do a lot of damage to backliners. You can still do one-shot builds. You can maybe do some tanky builds and uh, play off of your ultimate with like thorns and stuff. He definitely has potential, but not something I'm I'm looking for when I load into a game. Uh, Yorm, I'm gonna put in A, I think. Uh, I think, in a way, he's very similar to the Whale when it comes to... I think he actually has a lot of lane pressure, and that is pretty important and ranked. I think he has pretty solid build paths with, like, Contagion being a really good into a lot of these warriors, My Mystical's pretty good for him, Voidstone's back. He's just a character that controls his side of the map very well, and has solid damage, and a lot of relic options now as well. He can go Thorns and Horrific and have a lot of value for his team. Uh, he, he's just missing a lot of late game potential compared to something like the Whale, so I think he's just solid. Like, if you play Yorm into a lot of these picks, you'd be able to go even or win. Uh, and I think that makes him solid enough to, to be played. Uh, Achilles is the most A-tier character of all time. Um, doesn't excel at anything, just a solid pick. Has a lot of potential with his execute, but most of the time you're you're pretty passenger mode with this character. You're you're just you're just there uh, doing a solid amount, but nothing crazy. Uh, decent laning phases. Um, but yeah, I I don't really have much to say about him. I think he's just a very stable character in every meta. Whale is obviously gonna be an S plus. Um, Absolutely broken early game, absolutely broken late game. His mid game, I'm still not sure about, because I think it's hard for him to force fights in group. Um, but yeah, the amount of val like, this character will win you pretty much every laning phase or go even. Uh, and late game, his ultimate and the damage he can do, uh, <laughs> it's, ju it's just crazy. I don't even know if there's any counterplay for carries other than, uh, Hoping that the whale gets a bad engage, or you're playing incredibly safe backliners that can instantly disengage. Um, yeah, I'd say this character's a must ban, or if you let it through, you want to make sure your soul laner has, you know, Bologna or Amma or Vamana or Chuck, you know, one of these gods to match him in lane and try and match what he can do in the late game, too. Um, and if I'm playing against the whale, I'd also want to make sure I have a lot of lockdown and CC. Just so this this god can't really free cast. Uh, if you're a soul laner, you should definitely try to be practicing this character, figuring out how you uh, how you enjoy playing him, and just figuring out how broken he is. Really. Hmm. I actually really liked Ravana when I played him. I'm going to put him A+. Plus. Um, I think Ravana, again, just has has a really solid laning phase. His shielding is still pretty high. Uh, he has high damage, good build paths. Uh, I'd say, again, a little bit like Kukulin, uh, but his only issue is very one-dimensional. All he does is uh, blink in, engage, ult in, uh, and if he doesn't kill a backliner, he doesn't really have an option of getting out. So... He's a bit one-dimensional, but he's good at that one thing, and he has good laning phases, in my opinion. Um, 
with like phalanx and runeforge items like this and he bullies a lot of the characters below him uh just with the way his shielding works so definitely a character worth playing yeah his laning phase is really easy he, he has really high base damage and good scaling so if you go and aim like runeforge uh, and just brawl whenever your three is up. You're gonna you're gonna be poking out most picks uh, at this stage of the game. All right, Kazembo. Kazembo actually felt insane in the game I played him. He's probably a character I have to play more. Yeah, I kind of want to put him S as well. I want to put him... I, I think I'll put him A+, plus just because I haven't played with him enough, but... uh, I feel like once you nail the laning phase as this character, um, there's a lot of lanes you can win. Because uh, always been a character where people don't really respect his laning phase enough, uh, and it opens them up to getting punished super hard. Uh, and I think the big strength is just in teamfights. If you're in a spot where you have Glorious Pridwin, Void Shield, Thorns, Fire Blink, I mean, the damage you can do to this character is just insane. And a little bit like the Whale, it just put, it puts carries in a position where they don't really get to play the game. So, yeah, after a few more games of playing him, there's, there's a chance I'd move him up, but from what I've seen so far, he's, he's incredibly strong. Uh... I guess his only downside is no sustain in lane, so if you play against some of these uh, other picks around him, you could get bullied a little bit. But I, but I think it's easy for him to stall a lot of laning phases. Oh, and Mystical Mail as well, how did I forget? Yeah, that makes him really strong as well. I need to drink one sec, be happy. Horus. Uh, I like Horus a lot. Um, he's kind of the same category, I'd say, as like Cthulhu and Guan, where he does rely on teamwork a lot and team play to get like a lot of value, but the thing that he offers is just a really insane early game. Uh, he has the potential to win any laning phase uh, off of his first few levels. He has a lot of damage, and having Gooseberries from level 1 just yeah, it just allows him to, to bully people for the first five levels, and that, that's a period of the game where you can get a massive lead. Especially if you play well with your jungler, and play for that first blue invade. Uh, a lot of his items are good now, I think multiple glyphs is big for him too. So I definitely recommend him if you're a, an enjoyer of Horus. Uh, Rat, I'm going to put B+. I think his laning phase is too weak, but the character as a whole has a lot of potential. Late game. His his issue is always going to be his laning phase. It takes so long to get to Acorn, and even when you get Acorn, the person you're laning against up here is is probably stronger still. But uh, if you can get him out of lane, he's he's a pretty insane tank uh, at the moment. Uh, I kind of want to put Lance in B. He's a character I love a lot, but uh. He just feels very wasted in solo lane. Um, if you're going full damage, you're going to be too weak in your laning phase. And if you're going hybrid, you're not going to do enough damage to kill anyone uh, by yourself. His laning phases are very inconsistent. Uh, a lot of it requires the other person to mess up for you to win, I think. Um, but he is really fun. It, He's definitely a character where I wish I could play him more in a lot more scenarios. It's just, it's just really hard right now for him. Uh, Loki, I want to put in B+. Plus. Uh, I think the god's just... He's just a really broken ranked character, and if you figure out how to lane with this character into higher pressure picks, you will be chilling. You will be able to get out of lane and absolutely make people miserable. Uh, you can do proc builds with uh, blue stone and like 50 cooldowns, stuff like that. Actually, that might be harder now with Transcendence having pen. Uh, or you could have stuff like 
Boomba's hammer, like play for super late game. He just has a lot of different ways of playing the character. It's just about nailing how you play his laning phase and making sure your matchup isn't too difficult. You gotta move Shiva up over Lance? Nah, I don't think so. I think I'm fine with both of them being there. Set to criminally low. I don't think he does more than any of the characters above him. Like, consistently. Uh, Cyrus, Esther, in my opinion. Uh, very similar to Chalk, right? Really solid laning phase, one of the best tanks in the game. Doesn't really lose lane to anyone, has the potential to win most lanes if you play it well. Has a lot of build paths, like, uh, you can do the Death Stall and more attack speed base, you can do full tank with Sundering Axe. He's just always in a good spot. That's, that's going to be rarely any game, so you're unhappy as Osiris right now. Set in the same tier as Gilgamesh is insane. Trust me, man. Like, Serta, uh, outside of like a really strong laning phase, Serta has a lot of downsides. Whereas Gilgamesh, uh, his only issue was his laning phase before. Uh, Mulan, I'm going to have down in... I think I'll have a B+. Plus. I mean, I'll, I'll probably readjust the list when I'm done with every character. Uh, I just need to finish the list first, you know? I think Mulan, again, just... Her laning phases are so strong, and she can bully pretty much every character. Uh, just her only downside is outside of lane. Her ultimate's still really punishing to herself, and an AD season may just can punish us so much for going too deep. Uh, so I, I would only play her into backlines where I can safely ult in and all in and not, not be in trouble. But uh, she she has really good item interactions. Like she's a fun character to play, with stuff like Pridwin, Dawnbringer, Redstone. Just very hard to get a game where you'll get value because of how how risky she is outside of lane. Yeah, the go the gods in this category I just haven't placed yet. I'm actually not gonna put Ao yet because I never I never got to try him. Uh, Nike, I'm gonna put in... I wanna put her S. But I think I'm definitely gonna move some of these characters up. Yeah, I think A was actually terrible as well, the more I think about it. Unless you get to full build. Uh, I think Nike was already one of the best solo laners, and now I think with Mystical being back, uh... And Void Shield being back, like, th these are items that this character loved before. And it just increases how much damage she does throughout the whole game. She's one of the best abusers of everything that got buffed. Uh, she's really good with Axe or Blue Stone. Her laning phases are pretty solid, unless you're against, like, I think Arthur is really good into Nike, and the Whale probably does really well, but other than that, I think you can get away into most matchups and just do insane work in team fights. She's probably one of the best team fighters in the game. <laughs> I'm putting Odin in A plus at least. Uh a lot of the same reasons as Nike. I think he I think he abuses all the items that got buffed again, like <laughs> better than most, and as long as you're maxing your three in lane, uh he he just has a really stable laning phase into most picks as soon as you have cooldown. Obviously, his cage like uh, is either going to be super useful or completely irrelevant based on what comps you're into. But uh, the the damage he can output and the chaos he can cause in late game team fights is is higher than most gods. Set. Uh, set, set, I think, has a lot of potential, but his laning phase is bad. That's that's the one thing holding him back. This god's a monster in ranked, uh, when you can get through to, like, mid and late game. You're just not going to be allowed to by a lot of the picks above. 
Um, but I, I think he has really good build paths to be hybrid. Like Blackthorn, Transcendence, Void Shield, something like that, you know? Makes him pretty strong. Um, but yeah, just, just too low lane pressure. I'm putting Huck in A. I don't think Huck's ever, like, a crazy ranked character. Just because, uh, he isn't that threatening to backline, uh, as the picks above him. He's a lot more focused on CCing frontliners and trying to force relics and just being annoying. And I think that loses value in ranked. Um, which is why he probably isn't above. Also, I think uh, the characters above have good matchups into him for the most part, too. Uh, especially, like, up here. But he's still a solid pick. Uh, he's never bad, I'd say, other than maybe into stuff like Odin and Osiris, because you can hit camp pretty easily. I think if you get mannequins first, is good enough to be A+. I, I haven't tried him personally, so... Uh, Naja, he's only on this because my viewers keep asking me to play him. Uh, I have no idea where I'd put him, because I haven't played him. I'm gonna put him B+. Uh, and I don't really have much to say, it's a viewer request. Wait, Moors, why would you put him in, in S+, plus? I need an explanation. He's probably B. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> uh, ignore that one. He abuses all the items so well. What do you mean you haven't played him? I haven't played him this season, yeah. What about Pele? I, all the gods on this list are ones I've played or seen, other than Naja. Jong slaps anyone in solo? I really don't think so. Yeah, if, if a god from here is not up here, it's because I haven't seen them in my games, or I haven't played against them. Uh, that's, like, obviously, there's, there's, like, 20 more characters down here that everyone's played in the past, but uh, I don't want to just clog the list with stuff I haven't uh, messed around with myself. I, I, I think it's just, like, uh, it's just, like, wrong to tell, tell you guys that, like, yeah, Pele is, like, good because I just think she is. Like, I haven't played or seen it, so... Uh, and her, I just finished playing against the hacker. Um, I honestly think he he didn't feel bad. Uh, I'm still putting him in B plus because it's not his best role. But I do think and her solo uh, is something I might try again. He he's one of these hunters where you can build tanky on him and get value because of his prot tread. Obviously genetics played him in support in SPL, so obviously that's value as a tank for for this god. So maybe it's worth trying. Uh, Ares, I'm actually going to put in uh, Aether. I think his, uh, I think the god is just really strong now, uh, with stuff like Mystical being back. And if you're not camped and you're allowed to get to a point where you have like Mystical, Breastplate, you can bully a lot of these characters above you. Just a strong character. Um, especially in Ranked. Uh, you have to remember this list is for climbing, so... I mean, people just aren't really going to be able to punish you as consistently as they should be uh, if you're playing uh, Ares. And he's also a character that can punish uh, others for not being too experienced into him. Similarly to something like Kazembo. Um, let's see if there's anything I want to change. I kind of want to move one of these two up. But I'm not sure if I should. I kind of want to move Arthur up, but might be too soon. Wukong up as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's definitely a lot better than these characters, so that does make sense. Um, everything else I think I'm happy with. Maybe I'd move Sylv down. That's a little goofy now that I think about it. Uh... But I think the rest I'm not unhappy with. Cabra can be played solo again. I haven't tried him. 
so I don't really have an opinion on him. I don't think he'd be that good into a lot of these characters. So if Cabracken was here, he'd probably be in the lower half. Self disrespect a little bit, yeah. It's fine. I'll pl I'll play him another time and figure it out. Figure him out. No, I haven't seen anyone play Jing Chen. Let's see. I think I'm happy with all the gods on this list. Um, I mean, there's obviously a lot of characters here that I will play it so in solo at some point this year. It's just uh, based on the two weeks or so of ranked here that I've played. Uh, this is mainly what I've seen. I feel like the graph has a nice curve, you know, or the tier list. Zhong, Athena. I have not seen a single Zhong Kui. Yeah, I think I'm happy with this. So well, this is for the 2nd of February. Uh, I'll probably do an update on this probably like a month from now, right? When there'll be a new patch. Can I A+. Dude, I'm, I'm telling you, I win every game with this god. Alright, but yeah, thanks for watching. That's the list. Uh, yeah, because this is going to be a YouTube video, guys. Like, uh, I'm... I'm, I guess I'm technically recording this, but yeah, thanks for watching, appreciate it. Uh, leave your comments down below in the list, for the list, you know, if you disagree, if you think I'm a fucking idiot, if I miss your favorite character, all that good stuff. But yeah, if you disagree with anything, come to my chat, debate me, I'll let you know why I did certain stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching.